Any type of surgery is scary, I think. And you know, when you say heart, you're like, oh no, you know. I can't even tell you. It's changed my life. I feel like a new person. I've had several friends since who have been diagnosed with prostate cancer. And boy, the first thing I do is I raise my hand and I say, you need to find out about the, the robotic surgery uh, technique because it's a, great, it's a great way to go. I think one of the things that's happening here that I think has been uh, you know, very positive is, is the encouraging of other specialties to take advantage of this technology. Uh, and that we now have you know, a multi-specialty robotic program that I, that I think isn't available very many places. KXLY 4 HD presents Spotlight on Health, Robotic Surgery. Brought to you by Providence Healthcare. The words robotic surgery may conjure up for many an alien world where robots perform tasks independent from any human contact. In reality, with the technical advancements that have been made recently in the world of robotics and robotic surgery, nothing could be further from the truth. As a leading robotic surgery center, Providence Sacred Heart Medical Center offers patients the most advanced technology found in the world today. With three surgical robots at their disposal, procedures in the areas of cardiology, urology, gynecology, and now head and neck surgery give surgeons the ability to perform procedures more effectively, more safely, and to a broader range of patients. Hi, I'm KXOI4's Nadine Woodward. In the world of medicine, robotic surgery is a relative newcomer, but in the last 10 years, advancements have allowed this cutting-edge technology to radically change the way patients are treated. Less invasive, smaller incisions, and very little discomfort, all leading to quicker recoveries. What was once considered just science fiction, robotic surgery is revolutionizing the way medicine is being practiced right here at Providence Sacred Heart. You have quite the reputation all over the country for your work in robotic surgery. You pretty much are the grandfather of this procedure. Well, I'm not the grandfather, but one of the early adopters. Dr. Leland Sewex's reputation as a leader in the field of robotic cardiac surgery is known around the world and his knowledge on the subject is extensive. The initial research that, that led to that was actually military. Uh, and the idea behind it was the potential for, for doing things like surgery in battlefield situations without having to be there, without having to have the surgeon there, to be able to be somewhere else and controlling that. One of the things a lot of patients uh, and families are confused about is the, the robot does not work on its own. You know, it doesn't just go and do an operation. And it's also not like the robots that you see on an auto assembly line where, the, you know, it's programmed and it just does a certain thing over and over again. The technical term for what this robot is is a telemanipulation system where the robotic instruments are actually controlled by the surgeon. So it just transfers your motions to those instruments. So it's, it's a live, continuous control of that instrument. It's not acting autonomously. The initial use of robots in surgery started in the early 2000s, and after FDA trials and approvals, Sacred Heart was positioned on the ground floor of this breakthrough technology. As far as you know, Sacred Heart and, and how we got here, you know, a lot of credit, I think, even though you know, we pushed it uh, as surgeons, you know, some of the credit does go to the administration that really stepped up to the plate uh, and took a gamble on a very expensive piece of equipment. I think that's, that's paid off for the hospital, but they have continue to invest in that. We've upgraded the equipment, we've gotten additional robots, we now have three robots here to help meet up the demand for all the specialties. So, you know, it took a little bit of vision on our part and, and the administrations to see that there was a future to it. So they, they have made the effort to make that all work. With the latest versions of the robot costing about $1.8 million each, it's the commitment to the patient that drives Sacred Heart to keep up with the advancements. Really what's been most rewarding, in fact, is seeing how well the patients do. Um, the, the, you know, that was the primary reason we started. Uh, and we were concerned when we started about whether we would compromise their outcomes in order to, to get little incisions, you know, and that's a trade-off we didn't want to make. Uh, so seeing patients do well and get good results that, that last a long time, you know, have this you know, exceptionally high success rate of repairing valves, for instance, and closing ASDs and, and things like that. It's, it's been, you know, pretty gratifying seeing how well the patients do. 
So how does this technology work? Well, to find out, we were given a very special tour of one of Sacred Heart's robotic surgical suites. We are in one of the surgical suites at Providence Sacred Heart Medical Center, speaking with Dr. Stephen Brisbow. And uh, robotic surgery, this is where you do your work. That's right. That's so correct. give us a tour. Show us how it's done. Well, there's three mo main components to the system that we use. This is the console. This is actually where the surgeon sets and operates the robot using foot controls, clutch foot controls, and hand controls. We look in here and we have a view through the dual camera laparoscope. Mm -hmm. So we see virtual reality, we see a 3D image. And we can zoom with our clutches, we can zoom our camera in and out so that we can zoom right down on top of the pathology that we're working on so that we can do fine, delicate work. Wow. So this is the, the robot itself and it has four arms mm -hmm. and the central arm here has a a dual camera scope which we insert and then there's three arms for accessory for the instruments that we pass through and we place these hollow tubes this is a torso of a mannequin of course and we place these hollow tubes under an anesthetic through the abdominal wall and then we place robotic instruments into these we call them ports, these hollow tubes. Mm -hmm. and the robotic instruments, mm -hmm. so they're like the human hand. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's, they, but look at how little that is, so they, teeny. They rotate in seven different degrees to enable you to operate at right angles to the tissue, things you can't do with straight laparoscopy. And if you're here and, and you're looking for the most part through these uh, glasses, for lack of a better term, who's watching the screen, the rest uh, of the staff? Everybody in the room. You have to have somebody at the bedside who knows the instrumentation. They, they change instruments for me while I'm sitting over there. They pass needles into me. They retract for me. They enable me to do the procedure. That wow. They're actually carrying out what you need to do through the robot. Well, they, they are assisting. Yeah, okay. and, and you have to have somebody at the bed. That's key, yeah, critical. Yeah. You have to have a team of people. Once I put my head in the console here, I have my 3D image, and I click my thumb and forefinger together, then I have control of these instruments. You just have you know, unbelievable control. If you want to do a running suture, you can do that. Or you, can, you know, there's just all kinds of things that you can do. Well, robotic surgery has become second nature to you. Dr. Brisbane, thank you for giving us a tour today. Thank you. thank you. Truly amazing technology. When we come back, we'll look at some specific examples of how robotic surgery is changing people's lives. And boy, the first thing I do is I raise my hand and I say, you need to find out about the, the robotic surgery uh, technique because it's a great, it's a great way to go.